Hi everyone and welcome to the start of September. I hope you're all having a wonderful month so far. I'm so excited for the beginning of autumn in the UK. This is my favourite season so I really can't wait and I've been inspired to create some autumnal content for you today. So in this video I'm going to be sharing some favourite autumn wreaths that really make for lovely cosy evenings curling up with a good book and I've also created a new commonplace book guide for you, my autumn commonplace book. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I've created a few of these guides for you already. There's the spring commonplace book and the summer com commonplace book and now I've just created the autumn one. So these are free guides that you can get by signing up for my newsletter. If you're already on my newsletter then you'll be getting this guide in an email today. So look out for that, but you can go to mirandajanemills.com forward slash autumn commonplace book and sign up and get your free download. I absolutely love keeping a commonplace book. This is a type of journal essentially where you can write down favourite quotes, um, literary extracts, poems, recipes, whatever takes your fancy really. I absolutely love seasonal reading so in my commonplace book I like to write down a lot of seasonal quotations and what I've done is I've gathered some of my favourite quotes together in this commonplace book guide for you. So you can copy out any that you like as well. I've also included a book list for autumn reading and a recipe for blackberry and apple crisp, which is really delicious, I have to say. So I had a lot of fun creating this free guide for you and I hope that you enjoy it as well and that it also just enhances your autumn season a little bit more too. But on to some more autumnal content as well today, which I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. I've got a big stack of books here and I can't wait to chat about them. So first up, I think that autumn is just the time of year where I love to read books that celebrate books and that celebrate a love for literature. And I think one of the best books that does this is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. And her letters start in October when she started to write to a bookshop in London. Helene Hanf was living in New York at the time and she started to write to a bookshop in London requesting books that she wanted. And this is such a an amazing collection of letters that tell a story not only of a friendship that Helene developed between um, her main correspondent Frank who worked at the bookshop and also other people who worked in the bookshop too. The bookshop was at 84 Charing Cross Road in London but it also really celebrates not just this friendship but a true love for literature and a passion for books and that's one of the reasons that I love this book so much so this is one that I really love to return to in the autumn October is the perfect month to pick it up so do add it to your to be read pile if you've never read it but it's also a wonderful one to reread and then this book, Letter from New York, also by Helene Hampf, is a wonderful addition to your autumn reading pile as well. This lovely new edition has just been published this year from Mandalay Press. And this is a little series of letters that Helene Hampf wrote about her life in New York. And it starts with October 1978. And I just wanted to read this beginning to you. You have no idea what it's like here in October. You'd have to live through three months of the soggy 98 degree heat of a New York summer to know how it feels when you wake up one morning and it's suddenly fall. And you walk down Fifth Avenue on a Saturday, smelling the chestnuts roasting and the hot pretzels at every corner stand. And you look at the new fall clothes in the windows of Bergdorf's and Bonwitz and Saks. 
and your tongue hangs out to buy one of the new pantsuits to wear to Connecticut or wherever, when de rigueur you drive up to see the leaves. Every October, New Yorkers suddenly become nature lovers. <laughs> um, I think that just captures autumn in New York, fall in New York so well. And that makes this book brilliant to pick up. Obviously, these little essays go all through the years and all through the seasons. But there are some really lovely autumn picks in here. And it's just the perfect kind of book to dip in and out of, and maybe have on your bedside table in the autumn. And then I wanted to recommend some sort of modern classics for autumn reading. The first one I want to talk about is The Fortnight in September by R.C. Sheriff. I've mentioned this book many times on my channel before. I just adore it. It's one of my absolute favourites. It's one of the most comforting, cosy reads. So if you really are in the mood to just cuddle up and get cosy in September, then this is the perfect book. It's all about a very ordinary middle-class English family and the fortnight that they spend every year in September for their annual holiday by the seaside. It was first published in September 1931 to rave reviews and it's been a real favourite of so many readers and writers ever since. The incredible writer Kazuo Ishiguro loves this book and credits it in part for his works like The Remains of the Day. And I think there is some of that feeling of nostalgia that really comes into RCF Shara's writing as well as it does into Ishiguro's. But it's very much about noticing tiny details of um, everyday occurrences and how special those little moments of life really are. This is a book that really celebrates humankind and it celebrates just kindness and having empathy for each other as well. It's a beautiful book and I hope you'll read it. If you've never read it before, then I do recommend reading it this September. And then Goodbye Mr Chips by James Hilton is my comfort book club choice for this September. And I think it's a wonderful book to read this month when that back to school atmosphere is in the air because this is about a retired school teacher who is looking back on his career and on his whole life as well and reflecting on moments that were special to him and moments that made him the man that he became. This is such a poignant elegant novel. There is a bittersweet quality to it, which I think again is very appropriate to autumn, which has to be the most bittersweet of the seasons. But it's such a tender book. You do cry a little bit reading it, but again it's so much about how much kindness matters and how good people matter and the effect that this very ordinary man had on all of the boys that he taught at this school and how special he became to them. It's really a wonderful book. If you like um, The Fortnight in September, then I think you would really enjoy this one as well. So I hope you will be reading along with us for the Comfort Book Club this month. And then another brilliant modern classic that makes perfect reading for autumn is The Shooting Party by Isabel Colgate. So this is set in Edwardian England. It takes place in an old manor house in the English countryside and the action really takes place over 24 hours. And it's set sometime in late October. And it follows what happens within these 24 hours to a group of people who are gathered together for a shooting party in the English countryside. And this novel 
is special in that it was one of the very first that really explored the upstairs and the downstairs of this type of country gathering. So you follow the lives of the servants in this big house, as well as the gamekeeper, for instance, um, just as much as you follow the lives of the inhabitants of the house and their guests. And this is definitely one of the uh, lesser cosy reads, I have to say. There is a tragedy that occurs in this book, and it also very much hints at the future tragedy to come of World War, War of World War One, and how this is really a vanishing era. I think the blurb at the back um, puts it very well. It says that this is an elegant and poignant book which should be read slowly and savoured. It describes a way of life which ends for the characters at the end of a fateful day, for the world the following year. I so agree with that and I also agree that even though this is a very slight book, it really is a good idea to read it slowly and to savour it. It's beautifully written. Um, I've gone on to read a bit more of Isabel Colgate since then. I believe this was actually written in the 70s, but she captures the feeling of Edwardian England so well. Um, it's just so well written and it is a book to really savour and it inspired people like Julian Fellows who credits the shooting party for being a big part of the inspiration behind Gosford Park, one of his, mo one of his most famous films. So definitely a good one to read this autumn if you haven't before. And then another autumn classic that I would say is a real modern classic too, and it's beloved by so many people, is Rosamund Pilcher's September. This is a book to just lose yourself in over the next few weeks. If you've read her book, The Shell Seekers, then you'll recognize some of the characters in September. And I would recommend reading The Shell Seekers before you read September, because it just gives you a bit of background on one of the characters in particular that's quite important, I think, to have. So if you've read The Shell Seekers, then I definitely recommend reading September too. It actually starts in May, but the climax of the book builds towards September and to this special birthday party that is being held in September in Scotland. And there are some lovely descriptions of preparing for this party and also of autumn in Scotland, which I really love. So yes, another modern classic that is perfect for cosy autumn reading. And then another book that I consider a real modern classic that's loved by both adults as much as children, and that's A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Lengel. This book famously begins on a dark and stormy night in autumn. It says, it was a dark and stormy night in a small village in the United States. In her attic bedroom, Margaret Murray, wrapped in an old patchwork quilt, sat on the foot of her bed and watched the trees tossing in the frenzied lashing of the wind. Margaret then goes downstairs to make herself some cocoa, and there she bumps into her mother. But then a mysterious guest arrives and all sorts of strange happenings really begin from then. Margaret's father, a famous physicist, is missing and she and her brother and a friend of theirs go on a quest to find him. This is an incredible science fiction novel. If it's one that you've never read, I so recommend reading it. It's just such a classic of the genre. And like I said, it's one that both adults as well as children can really enjoy. And it would be a brilliant book to snuggle up with this autumn. Now, some of my favorite autumnal reading always has to be mysteries, I think. Autumn is the perfect season for curling up with a cosy mystery, 
The queen of crime is of course Agatha Christie and I wanted to tell you about some of my favourite Agatha Christie's to read in the autumn. So the first one I'm sure many of you know is Halloween Party. I tend to reread this every year around Halloween and I like to listen to it actually as an audio book. It's just so good, so atmospheric. I think this September there's a new film by Kenneth Branagh coming out called A Haunting in Venice that is based on Halloween Party. From what I've seen of the trailer, it looks very different from the book, but it still looks so atm atmospheric and I'm keen to see it and it is based on this one. So if you're thinking of seeing the film, then do give the book a read too. I'm looking forward already to rereading this one in October. It's always a favourite. It's an Hercule Poirot mystery as well. And those are always so good. However, my real favourite is Miss Marple. So I had to recommend a Miss Marple one to read in the autumn. This is A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie. And this, this starts on a specific day. It starts on Friday, October 29th. So if you want to pick it up on October 29th and dive into this, I would not blame you. It has such a good opening for a mystery. Uh, you sort of see some residents of a small village called Chipping Cleghorn, I think. I think that's what it's called. Um, in the English countryside, everyone is sitting at their breakfast table and they notice a very strange announcement in the morning paper. And this is the announcement. A murder is announced and will take place on Friday, October 29th at Little Paddocks at 6.30 p.m. Friends, please accept this the only intimation. This is one of my favourite openings in Christie because she takes you from one household to another in this village as they read this announcement in their morning papers and you do suspect that these different people will end up being the different suspects <laughs> in an upcoming crime and you see their reaction to these announcements. You also are then taken to the household of Little Paddocks, where this murder is presumably going to take place. And no one knows anything about this announcement and everyone denies having placed it in the paper. But they decide that they had better hold some kind of a party anyway, as they're, sh they're sure that their friends will all turn up avid with curiosity and that's the beginning of what becomes one of the hardest murders I think that Miss Marple has to solve. <laughs> so yeah, really good one to pick up in the autumn. And then if you love Miss Marple like I do, I think you would really enjoy these stories um, that are very much in the spirit of Miss Marple. They're not by Agatha Christie, they're all by modern writers and this is a collection of short stories about Miss Marple and the crimes that she solves and it takes Miss Marple all around the world and it's just such a fun read if you're a fan of Agatha Christie and Miss Marple in particular. This is my comfort book club choice for October. It's now out in paperback as well. And I can't wait to read this one all together. I read it last year and really enjoyed it. The first story in this takes place on bonfire night. So that is a really good one to read in the autumn. But all of the stories are just so fun to cozy up with, preferably with a hot chocolate in front of a fire. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one again in October. And then some other mysteries I wanted to recommend. The first one I've told you about already, that's The Wheel Spins by Ethel Lena White. I loved reading this book. I read it in the summer, but it actually takes place in September and it's a really good early autumn read, especially, especially if you're in the mood for something a little bit spooky and mysterious. This is one of those mysteries that is set almost entirely on a train and I just love mysteries like that. And this one 
is brilliant. I won't say too much about it because I've spoken a lot about it before, but it's the novel that inspired Alfred Hitchcock's famous film, The Lady Vanishes. And it's all about a young woman who is traveling back to Britain from Europe. She's traveling on her own and she's suffering from sunstroke when she first joins the train. And another English lady in her compartment helps her and is kind to her. But after falling asleep, the young woman wakes up and realizes that this other English lady has disappeared. But no one in the train will believe her, and in fact, everyone denies that another English lady was ever in the compartment. So a great premise, I think, and it's a really super plot and makes you just keep turning those pages. So another great one for autumn. This mystery I actually just got in the post and I can't wait to read it. It's The Theft of the Iron Dogs by ECR Lorak and it's a mystery set in Lancashire and apparently it's set all throughout a rainy September. So perfect reading for this month. I was very lucky to get this sent to me by the British Library. I've read other mysteries by ECR Lorak before and I've really enjoyed them. She's one of my favorite authors that they're reprinting at the moment. And I'm really excited to get to this one. I love that it's set in September. It should be a really good autumn mystery. And it sounds um, really good. It says, the fishing cottage of a local farmer has been broken into with an assortment of seemingly random items missing, which include a reel of salmon line, a large sack and two iron dogs from his fireplace. This incident becomes all the more enticing to Inspector MacDonald of Scotland, of Scotland Yard when a body washes up on the banks of the River Loon. So I can't wait to get to this one myself in September. Perfect early autumn reading for me. If you're in the mood for a bit of light romance in the autumn too, then I have a couple of recommendations for you. The first one is A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. This begins in October and there are some lovely autumnal descriptions in this romance. It's set in the Victorian times and it's just a real Cinderella style story. It's about a young woman who, when she was a girl, ran away from home after the death of her father, convinced that her stepmother had something to do with his death. Years later, she decides to reintroduce herself into her stepmother's family, um, ultimately plotting revenge. But romance happens along the way as well, and this is just a really fun, light-hearted book that makes lovely, cosy reading for the autumn. If you fancy something a little spookier, a little witchier, then I really recommend The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Again, this is a real romance as well, so if you're in the mood for romance this autumn, then this is a really fun one. It's about a young witch living in the UK who answers an advertisement that is quite mysterious and it sends her to a house in Norfolk. And there she discovers two young witches and she's been hired to help take care of them. There's also a rather dashingly handsome librarian <laughs> that becomes a major part of this story. It's very fun and very lighthearted, the perfect book to pick up around Halloween. So yes, one to add to your pile if you haven't read it before. Then something I really love to do in the autumn is to have a little stack of books that would be perfect for either keeping on my bedside table or that I would just want to pick up and read whenever I'm in the mood for something a little bit spooky maybe. And I've pulled together a few of these books to recommend to you. So this first one, Dark Fairy Tales of Fearless Women, um, edited by Rosalind Curvin, is really a great one to have on your bedside table or to pick up if you're just in the mood for reading some sort of fairy tales or myths in the autumn. I love the beginning of the book, actually, how it introduces it. It says, welcome. 
The curtains are drawn and the candles are lit. The fire's banked up to a warmth of glowing embers. Come in, come inside to dream. Everyone is welcome. Take a seat, put aside your work, shrug off your love pangs and family worries. For grandmothers and wise women, old wives and young wanderers have all gathered here from around the globe to share their wonderful stories. Are you comfortable? Do you yearn for a world in which magic exists, hope wins, and every woman's heart is alive with courage? Then let us begin. So this is really a fairy tale collection that gathers together stories from all around the world, from Europe to Africa to South America, and they all have at the heart a story about a courageous woman in some way. So this is just a really fun little collection to keep on your bedside table or to keep by your favorite armchair and just pick up whenever you want a short little read. And then another collection in the same sort of idea is this quaint and curious volume one, Tales and Poems of the Gothic. This one has a bit more of a traditional selection of stories. Um, there's some by Elizabeth Gaskell, for instance, and Edgar Allan Poe in this collection. Again, I think it's just brilliantly done. It looks so autumnal and slightly spooky from the cover perfect to have on your autumn bedside table. Then another one that you definitely have to bring out around Halloween is the Virago Book of Witches, edited by Sharuka Hussain. And it's a selection of stories from all around the world and from different cultures about women and witchcraft. So another great one for the autumn. Then I absolutely love to read some Sherlock Holmes stories at this time of year. I just like to be transported to Baker Street and in the company of Sherlock Holmes and long-suffering Dr. Watson and just curl up in front, of, in front of a fireplace and read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is just such a brilliant collection of the Sherlock Holmes short stories. I think it's one of my very favourites, the very first ones. Classic reading that's brilliant for autumn. Now, if you're in the mood for something really quite spooky, not so cosy, but that will just have you turning those pages, then I really recommend this short story collection. It's The Yellow Wallpaper and Selected Writings by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. You can sort of flick through this and pick and choose what stories you want to read. That's what I've done with this collection. The Yellow Wallpaper is actually set in the summer but it's one of the spookiest stories I've ever read. If you want your blood to be chilled just a little bit, then this is a good one to read in the autumn. And yes, there are some really quite scary ones, but scary in that sort of psychological way. There's not blood and gore or anything like that. It's just somehow she manages to set your skin crawling with very very little um it's amazing there's one here i think it's called the rocking chair or something like that it's a ghost story and that is really quite chilling as well i'm a bit of a baby when it comes to <laughs> scary stories but these i can read still and i just think she's such a good writer um, so yes, The Yellow Wallpaper is a classic and her most famous. <laughs> and when I read it, I did wonder if it would make me a little spooked by my own rather lovely wallpaper in my bedroom. Fortunately, it didn't. <laughs> I think my wallpaper is too lovely, but it is quite a creepy one, uh, but really well worth reading. So yes, if you're feeling brave, then have a go with these. And if you want something <laughs> not so scary on your bedside table, then I have a few things to recommend. This little collection of poems that celebrate books and libraries is a real favourite of mine. Again, like I said before, I think that autumn is just the perfect season to really celebrate your love for books and for getting cosy and just spending time reading. And I wanted to share this little poem from here with you. It's called Books A Delightful Society. And now I commend you again to your books, 
Books are delightful society. If you go into a room and find it full of books, and without even taking them down from your shelves, they seem to speak to you, to bid you welcome. I think that's so true. I always feel my books are such a friendly presence in literally almost every room of my house. <laughs> um, but I don't even have to take them off the shelves to feel welcomed by my books. <laughs> I love that idea and I think it's so true. So yes, this is a lovely little collection to have by your bedside table in the autumn. And then another book that really celebrates books as well as booksellers and bookshops is this, The Bookseller's Tale by Martin Latham. And this is a lovely collection of essays. I especially like the first one in it, which is on comfort books. You'll know why I love that one so much. And it really just makes delightful reading this book. Another lovely one to pick up and dip into whenever you're in the mood. Then, this is such a lovely cosy book to have on your bedside if you're really tired and you don't want to read too much but you want to look at something beautiful then I so recommend this book. It's called How to Be a Moonflower, A Field Guide by Katie Daisy. And in this book, Katie Daisy really celebrates the night and she celebrates those beautiful night skies that become so much more clear in the autumn when the nights are longer when the evenings are longer you really do start to notice the beauty of the moon and the stars so much more and this book does just a glorious job of celebrating the nighttime nocturnal animals and her illustrations are just so so beautiful I just love them and she gives you some ideas for how to make the most of the night time yourself, how to celebrate the nature of the night and I think that this is a delightful book to just flick through. Like I said, if you're tired, you don't want to read too much but you want something soothing to enjoy as you unwind, then this is a truly beautiful book to look through. As is this gorgeous one. This will make lovely bedtime reading for a young person in your life but I also read it at bedtime to myself the other night and absolutely loved it and it made me really smile to myself too because at the moment I look out the windows of our house and I see all these squirrels scampering around with these huge nuts between their jaws looking for places to bury them and just burrowing into the ground and they're having a field day this is the perfect book to read to sort of accompany the nature outside my window at the moment and it's the squirrel and the lost treasure by carly bickford smith and look at those end papers just so stunning and so autumnal. The illustrations in this are just gorgeous. And of course the book starts in the autumn, it, go it goes all through the year, but then it ends back again, um, returning to another autumn and to another year. And it's just so beautifully done. There's so much that you can talk to children about um, through this book. The cycle of life and of nature really plays a part in the story and it's just exquisitely done. I love it. So this just came out recently and is well worth getting. Then if you want to curl up with a true old classic, I've gathered three of my favourites for autumn. My absolute favourite has to be Persuasion by Jane Austen. This is such an autumnal book, not only in its tone and that bittersweet quality to the writing, to the story. But it's also mainly set in the autumn too. And there are some beautiful descriptions. I included a description from Persuasion of Anne's autumnal walk in my autumn commonplace book guide. So you'll notice that in there. And I listen to this as an audiobook every autumn. It's just part of my autumnal traditions and Persuasion is my favourite Jane Austen book so I utterly adore it and I love to return to it every year. Then 
Autumn is definitely a time to curl up with a weighty classic and just get lost in those pages. And there are two ones that really spring to mind for me to autumn. They both actually start in November. That's Bleak House by Charles Dickens and then Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Both such marvellous classics. I really recommend either reading them yourself or maybe downloading the audiobook and enjoying sort of having some quiet time where you can just listen to the story, sipping a cup of tea or a hot chocolate, taking some time for yourself and just really enjoying a great classic of literature. So those are all the books that I'm recommending to you today. I hope you enjoyed this list of autumn reading suggestions. I stayed clear from anything too gothic and scary because I've done quite a few Halloween inspired reading roundups before. So if you want more scary books, then I would recommend having a look at those suggestions from me. These are books that I thought were particularly well suited for cosy evenings spent reading. So I hope you like these suggestions. Do remember to download my Autumn Commonplace Book Guide too if you would like more inspiration for Autumn. But thank you so much for watching. Extra big thanks to everyone who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. I always so appreciate your support, but I appreciate everyone who watches and comments and likes my videos and subscribes to my channel. So thank you very much. I hope you all have a wonderful September ahead. Goodbye.